Well, good morning. Rise and shine. Uh, like I said the last time, I've been asked to talk about the names of God. Yes, I've had a haircut. <laughs> um, I think it's fascinating that there are names of God that help to describe him and who he is and identify him, identify God. Um, we generally go by one name. Well, maybe one or two other names when we do something wrong, but uh, God has many names. And uh, I think it helps to identify when we're praying which God we're praying to. And so it's kind of useful to know these names, isn't it? To make sure that we're praying to the right God. Although he does know what's in our heart. So, but with our lips. So, let's have a look. Last time we looked at El Shaddai, Lord God Almighty, and Yahweh, Lord Jehovah. Um, I'd like to now look at El Elyon, the Most High God. El Elyon. It says here, and, and just, um, just because I found the Blue Letter Bible notes, on, uh, which is a non-denominational institute that provides for free help in understanding the Bible. And this was one of their pages, the names of God in the Old Testament. And uh, so they may quote some numbers, some facts and figures and words that uh, maybe you don't agree with, or maybe you've heard of a different version. That's okay. That's okay. Um, we're not going to get caught up in legalistic stuff here, okay? We're not going to get caught up in that. We're focusing above. We're focusing above. And we want to learn as much as we can. I'm learning. I'm learning all the time. Boy, am I learning. Elion. El Elion. The Most High God. It says it's been used in the Old Testament 28 times. It occurs 19 in Psalm. And it was first used in Genesis 14.18. There's no variance to the spelling. Uh, the meaning and derivation. El is another name that is translated as God and can be used in conjunction with other words to designate various aspects of God's character. Elion literally means most high and is used both adjectively and substantively throughout the Old Testament. It expresses the extreme sovereignty and majesty of God and his highest preeminence. When the two words are combined, El Elyon, it can be translated as the most exalted God. The most exalted God. I love that. I love that. The next one we're going to look at is a singular word. Adonai. I've heard that on programs before, Adonai. Um, the Pharisees used it quite a lot. Um, it means Lord, Master. So it's a very appropriate name to call God your Lord and Master. Use in the Bible, the Old Testament Adonai occurs 434 times. There are heavy uses of Adonai and Isaiah, Adonai Jehovah. It occurs 200 times in Ezekiel alone and appears 11 times in Daniel chapter 9. Adonai is first used in Genesis 15.2. Adonai is the verbal parallel to Yahweh and Jehovah. Adonai is plural. The singular is Adon. In reference to God, the plural Adonai is used. When the singular Adon is used, it is usually refers to a human lord. That's interesting. Adon is used 215 times to refer to men. Occasionally in scripture, and predominantly in the Psalms, the singular Adon is used to refer to God as well. To avoid contravening the commandment, thou shalt not take of the name thy Lord thy God in vain, Exodus 27, 
Sometimes Adonai was used as a substitute for Yahweh. Adonai can be translated literally as my lords, both plural and possessive. So that's, that's kind of interesting that. Adonai, Lord and Master. Now this is one that uses a word that came up recently and uh, Jehovah Nisi, it's N-I-S-S-I, however you want to say it. It means the Lord, my banner. It's only used once in Exodus 17.15. The variant sp spellings are Jehovah Nisi and Jehovah Nisi altogether in one word. The meaning and derivation, Jehovah is translated as the existing one or Lord, the chief meaning of Jehovah is derived from the Hebrew word Hava, meaning to be or exist. It also suggests to become, or specifically to become known. This denotes a God who reveals himself unceasingly. Nez, from which Nisi derived, means banner in Hebrew. Moses, recognizing that the Lord was Israel's banner under which they defeated the Amal Amalekites, builds an altar named Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. Ness is sometimes translated as a pole with an insignia attached. In battle, opposing nations would fly their own flag on a pole at each of their respective front lines. This was to give their soldiers a feeling of hope and a focal point. This is what God is to us. He's our hope and a focal point. A banner of encouragement to give us hope and a vocal point. Okay. <laughs> and we're going to throw in another one. I'm finding this interesting, okay? So bear with me. This is the one that I mentioned earlier in the first one, and I loved it. Jehovah Ra. And it's spelled Jehovah with Ra, R-A-A-H. And it means the Lord my shepherd. <sighs> That's so good. In the Old Testament, Jehovah Ra, the Lord, my shepherd, is used in Psalm 23. Go figure, huh? The meaning and derivation, Jehovah is translated as the existing one, our Lord. The chief meaning of Jehovah is derived from the Hebrew word Hava, meaning to be or to exist. Sorry to be repetitive. Real, from which Ra is derived, means shepherd in Hebrew. A shepherd is one who feeds or leads his flock to pasture, as in Ezekiel 34, 11 to 15. An extend translation of this word, Rhea, is a friend or companion. This indicates the intimacy God desires between himself and his people. The intimacy God desires, can you believe that? Between himself and his people. When the two words are combined, Jehovah Ra, it can be translated as the Lord, my friend. That's just beautiful. That's just beautiful. I think we'll stop there. Um, it is of importance to know the different words of God, the different names of God, for one reason and one reason only. You are now saying, that's the God that I worship. God Jehovah, El Shaddai, El Ilion, Yahweh, Adonai, Jehovah Ra, Jehovah Nisai. Personally, I like Jehovah Ra, the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. It's a connotation that, um, you know, just builds images in my mind. I already respect him as my Lord and Master, the Lord High, the Almighty Creator. But on an intimate level, he's my shepherd. And, and it just gets even better. It says, can be translated as the Lord, my friend. That's an amazing thing, to be a friend of God. Abraham was described as that. So, 
Maybe in your prayers. It'd be nice to hold on to one of those names in your memory and to actually say, Dear Jehovah Ra, the Lord my shepherd, hear my prayers. Remember, he loves you. All of these names are because he loves you. And I love you too. Have a great day. Thank you for listening. Thank you for putting up with me reading and not focusing on you all the time. But I'm trying to impart information a little bit at a time and uh, make comment on it. Really, I cannot contribute much apart from my own feeling in my heart. And my feeling in my heart is that the Lord is drawing close to us every day. And Lord Jesus is coming. He's coming. We're in end times, there's no doubt about that. He's coming. There's a, a great, great imminency. He's coming. Thank you all. Bye for now. Remember, God loves you. I love you too.